It's quite incredible really that we can use one of these diffraction gratings, this one is 80 lines per millimetre, to work out the wavelength of light coming from this laser. We did that by shining the light at a screen. Uh, here we had our central um, bright spot in the middle that I kind of lined up with the centre of this piece of paper. Um, it's squared paper so you could just count the number of squares to each of the bright spots that we observed. Or you could of course use a ruler. Now you can do that by measuring from the central point to the, where the bright spot is. It might be better to measure from maybe the first order to the other first order. Get this value here and divide by two. Again the bigger distance we're measuring the lower the percentage uncertainty in that measured value. So we did that for the first, second, and if you have a bigger piece of paper, you can use third, fourth, fifth, and so on. And then we got some data, which we've got in the table over here. Now the whole time we had 80 lines per millimeter. We kept a fixed distance to the screen of 1.600 meters. And here we've got the distance from the central bright spot to that order bright spot. Now, of course, what you can then do is use this to work out values of theta and then sine theta. Now, that was pretty straightforward. Something I would say, though, is that it's a little bit unsure about how many significant figures I should have used. Um, although we always measured to the nearest millimetre, that's to two significant figures, but these are all to three. So because that's to two significant figures, I gave these values to two and the rest of the values to three significant figures. And of course, we know that theta is going to be equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So this distance divided by that, uh, we can use that and tan to work out theta, and then we just take our values of sine theta. Now, if we then plot sine theta against n, we should have a straight line where the gradient is equal to lambda over d. And that's what we got. So um, I got the data here. I put in my line of best fit. I worked out the gradient as 0.302 which I, I felt I could read from this quite, quite easily, uh, divided by 6 to get 0 0.05033. And that's just the ratio of this number to this number. So there's no units there, and this is going to be a unitless gradient. But we know that's equal to lambda over d. And the thing that I've made mistakes with before in the past is I've just put in the value of d of 80. But that's not right. That's the spacings, or that's how many lines there are per millimetre, so if you multiply it by 1,000, we get the number of lines per metre, and that means the spacing is going to be 1 over that. So you've got 1 over 80 times 10 to the 3 times this number here, which gave me 6.29 times 10 to the minus 7, or 629 nanometers, which is the kind of number that we'd expect to see for red light. It actually happens to be on this laser here, 630 is the stated value, if that's actually true. And I would say because we could measure the values of theta to three significant figures and I'm sure that we can actually measure that to um, three significant figures as well uh, from the scale that we had here. I think it's justifiable to give the answer as 629 nanometers. So that's just my analysis using this data and of course I think compared to using a double slit because the light is much more spread out on the screen and the spots that we see are much brighter it's much easier to have uh, less uncertainty uh, in these values here, which should hopefully give us a better value for the wavelength of laser light.